I'm Kath and this is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for another video. This one is going to be a sewing catch up video where I'm going to be sharing what I've been up to on the sewing front over the last couple of weeks. And I've also got a little bit of knitting to share with you too, but I'll pop that as usual at the end of the video after all of the sewing content. So I haven't done a catch up video for two weeks now, last week. I released a fabric haul and sewing plans video, which you might have watched. I'll link it up above in case you haven't seen that one. But in the last couple of weeks, I have been busy doing a bit of sewing and knitting too. So I thought it would be good now to have a catch up and share all of what I've been up to. So that is the plan for this video. But as usual, I'll start off with what I'm wearing today. And actually the weather here is starting to feel a little bit more like spring, which is really nice. It feels like it's been cold for quite a while. And then we had a lot of rain and it was still cold. And today, actually, the sun was shining on the school one earlier. It's not shining anymore, but it's definitely starting to feel a bit warmer. So I'm starting to sort of sort of rejig or rethink about what I need to choose for my wardrobe and not going for the coziest makes, but something a little bit more transitional, I guess. I've got on two really old makes today that I still really love. I feel like they're kind of classics that um, never go out of style, or at least I never in, um, never stop enjoying wearing, at least. I'm not sure they're in style, but anyway, it's, I really like this outfit I'm wearing today. I've got on a handmade top and a handmade skirt. And the top is a hack of one of my favourite sort of jersey top patterns, which is this one here. Um, the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's just a really nice, fairly simple jersey top. It has got a few little add-ons you can make, add to kind of add extra features to the top. But I generally just make this version here. Um, quite a close-fitting jersey top with this scoop neck and long sleeves. I have quite a few times just turned into a t-shirt by cropping into short sleeves too. But the version I'm wearing today is a bit of a hack because I've changed the neckline. For this version, I borrowed the neckline for another pattern which is the Mandy Boat Tea by Tasuti. Um, I'll link both patterns down below. The Boat Tea is, Mandy Boat Tea is a free pattern, which is quite cool. Um, for kind of like a top with this sort of boat neck, obviously being the Mandy Boat Tea, but it's got a bit of a looser fit to it. I've never actually made the full boat tea. I've only ever borrowed the neckline to use on other garments, but I think the Mandy Boat Tea generally has more of a relaxed, looser fit rather than a close fitting Agnes top, but I really like the Agnes top with this, this neckline. I think it's a nice um, change from the scoop neck. And actually, um, also another reason why it's great is it's much easier to sew because you don't have to add on a neckband. And I find often with a scoop neckband especially, it can be quite hard to find that kind of sweep spot for the neckband where it's not sort of too tight, so it kind of bunches the fabric, but it's not so too loose, so it kind of um, maybe gapes slightly and doesn't sit flat. And I know that generally patterns come with a pattern piece for the neckband, but I often find depending on the fabric, you have to adjust it slightly anyway. So you can't always just go with a pattern piece. I don't know whether you find that too. Um, so anyway, this neckline is a bit easier to sew because you just sort of fold it under. You can see it's just folded under there. And then you sort of top stitch it in place. I usually use a twin needle just to sort of top stitch it down. But it gives a really nice clean finish, I think. So yeah, that is what I've got on the top. Um, Agnes tea, which I usually make in a straight size two with this neckline hack. And it was really easy to just um, merge the pattern pieces I found. Um, the lines kind of matched up quite nicely. So yes, on oh, the Agnes tea, um, it used to have a quite a limited size range, but it's now available in a um, UK six to 34 up to a bust of 60 inches. And the fabric I've got in today is like a cotton jersey, but a slightly thicker cotton jersey. So it's still a bit cozy. I really like this fabric. It's kind of a creamy color with red um, stripes and it's got these little speckles on it too, um, which I think are quite cute in lots of different colours. So yeah, that's my top. And then I've teamed it with one of my favourite um, handmade skirts, which is this one here, this pattern here, the Brumby skirt pattern by Megan Nielsen. So it's a woven skirt pattern with like a fitted contoured waistband. So it's sort of, it's sort of, it's like slightly like that to sort of hug your figure nicely rather than a straight sort of waistband. Um, and I'm wearing pretty much this version here that the model on the front is wearing. I think it's this um, View A, version one, sorry, 
with these big pockets, um, kind of like a mini skirt length, and it's got an exposed zip at the back. And I made mine in a kind of very similar denim to this with the, and I added on the top stitching, just like this too. Um, I'll stand up it so you can see it um, and see the whole outfit. And I'll show you the exposed zip too. I remember trying this exposed zip when I was quite new to sewing. And I do find Megan Nielsen patterns are really good at holding your hand through trickier things like that. And I remember being really, really pleased that I actually managed to get the zip in um, and I didn't have any sort of loose piece of fabric or anything. Um, it kind of seemed to go in fairly smoothly. Um, and even now, zips aren't my favourite. So yeah, I do love this exposed zip. So I'll show you that too. Yeah, it's quite a nice feature of this skirt. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. But I'll move on now to sharing what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front. So the first thing that I wanted to share is a new make that I finished earlier this week. And I talked about this one in my video last week, my fabric haul and sewing plans video. I think when I recorded that video at that point, I'd started getting the pattern pieces ready. I can't remember if I'd already cut the fabric out at that point, but yeah, I got really stuck into sewing this one and I really enjoyed sewing it up actually. And it's this pattern here. It is the Nova Jumpsuit Pattern by True Bias. Um, it's a pattern that's been around for a while um, for this jersey jumpsuit. So um, it's got two sort of different variations, but um, Essentially, you can make a jumpsuit and then you can, if you want to, you can add on elastic to bring in the waist, um, which takes you to like view A and B, or you can leave it more loose, which is view C and D. And you can make it either as a play suit or a jumpsuit, which has an elasticated cuff at the bottom. But it's quite a summery one, I think, with this sort of um, like a sort of tank top, vest top type, type neckline. Although I think I have seen it layered up with um, t-shirts underneath, I guess, to make it work. When the weather's slightly cooler too, I guess you could even layer it up with like a, an agonist tee like this underneath to make it work for yeah cooler weather. But yes, it's one that's been around for a while and it kind of been on my radar. And then I just thought on a whim, I'd like to try it. Um, I don't really know why, um, but I just, yeah, I'm just going to give it a go. I wanted a new project and I thought, I guess maybe I was thinking ahead to the summer and I thought it might be a nice traveling outfit, just really, really comfy, easy to wear. Um, and I, yeah, historically, I'm always a bit on the fence about jumpsuits and whether they're my thing. So I do love true bias patterns. So I thought maybe if I try true bias jumpsuit and I don't like it, then I can kind of pretty much put jumpsuits to bed and know they're not really my thing. But yeah, I do really like true bias patterns. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I've got the 0 to 18 version. There's also, I think, a 14 to 30 version of this pattern too. So it's got a good size range. So for this pattern, the first thing that I needed to think about was sizing. Um, with the jumpsuit, I guess there are lots of different sizes to consider, um, both kind of like, you know, bust waist and hips, but then also all the different lengths of those as areas too. So I had a little read of the True Bias leaflet, and it does, it's quite helpful in terms of sizing, actually. It does say, um, use the bust measurement as your main guide in choosing a size, and check the finished measurements before grading between sizes for the waist and hips as there's a lot of ease built into those areas and it may not be necessary. So I had a little look and I decided to go for a straight size zero based on my bust measurement. So the size zero of the jumpsuit is designed for a chest of 32 inches, waist of 26 inches and hips of 34 inches. And my measurements are 32, 26, 36. So my measurements would put me as a size zero on chest and waist and then a size four for hips. But when I had to look at the finished garment measurements, the finished garment measurements for the hips for the size zero um, are 39 inches. So there would still be three inches of wiggle room for my hip size on the size zero, which I thought was or should be enough. And I thought I didn't necessarily want too much fabric, extra fabric around there anyway. Um, so I thought I'd go with the true bias advice and just go with a straight size zero and keep my fingers crossed. So that is what I traced out. And then I decided I needed to make some adjustments um, in terms of length to lengthen bits of the jumpsuit. I've got like a longer torso, so I generally find I need to lengthen the sort of body area of a lot of patterns. So I thought I definitely will need to for a jumpsuit. And when I held the pattern pieces up, um, that confirmed my thoughts that I would probably want to add a bit of length there. So I had a look at the pattern pieces and had a little think about kind of where I wanted the elasticated waist to fit. So I'm going, I went for this 
version here that's sort of cinched at the waist. I didn't want that to sit too low if I lengthened too much at the top, um, but I didn't want it to feel like it was too high and riding up as well. And in the end, the lengthening adjustments I made um, were I lengthened the um, top body line by half an inch, um, just to bring it down very slightly. I then lengthened the crotch line by one and a half inches. I don't know whether maybe I do carry more length here than here, So, but when I looked at the pattern piece, that looked like the area I needed to lengthen a bit more. And then I lengthened the leg, um, the leg pattern piece by one and a half inches which ended up being quite a lot of length added overall, but I thought with the leg, leg pattern piece length, I could always bring that back up quite easily at the, um, at the sort of a cuff level later. So I thought better to have a bit too long and be able to shorten it slightly than having it feeling too short. Um, so yeah, that is how I traced out the pattern piece and ended up cutting out. I also um, read one blog post online um, that suggested the armhole could come up a little bit high and that, that's something that does bother me on clothes. I don't really like a really high armhole. Um, so I actually just dipped the armhole down slightly too. I wanted it to be nice and loose and comfortable. So that's another adjustment. I just brought the armhole down by one and a half centimetres, particularly because I thought if I did maybe want to layer the jumpsuit over the top of like t-shirts and things, I didn't want it to feel too snug um, under there with another layer underneath. So that is what I went with. Um, and yeah, here is my finished jumpsuit. I've got this... It's not a great one to show on camera because it's in a very plain fabric um, and it's quite long, but here is my Nova jumpsuit. Um, I made it in this cotton jersey fabric that I got from Minerva. I bought the pattern and the fabric from Minerva and also some stretch interfacing, which you use um, on the pockets. You just add a little bit on the front of the pocket to stop them sort of stretching out of shape, which I think is quite a nice feature. Um, as I know jersey pockets can be um, a bit problematic sometimes and can stretch a bit too much but I thought that's quite a nice way of sort of stabilizing them nicely um, and it's a really nice cotton jersey just in this navy color I wanted to go something quite plain and classic um, but it's, yeah it's got a nice amount of stretch but also it feels quite stable um, which the pattern did say would be a benefit the pattern does say you don't want to go for any too stretchy fabric like a a bamboo jersey might make it trickier it might stretch out of shape so this one it felt like quite a nice secure cotton jersey as it was um, and actually, I'm really happy with the adjustments I made. I really like where the waist sits. So I think the 0.5 inches was plenty there to bring the kind of elastic to around my natural waist. The crotch sits pretty well as well. So my kind of estimations worked out well there. I did end up, um, oh yeah, I did, that's what, that's what I did. I did end up actually originally adding two inches to the leg length, actually, not 1.5, and then, and then taking off 0.5 inches. So my end leg measurement extra added amount was 1.5 inches in total um and I think maybe I wanted it a bit longer than maybe the um the um the kind of patterns designed for you can see here on the model on the front it's sort of a little bit higher up um and I wanted mine maybe to come just a little bit lower um so that's why I needed all the length added on I think so I think this pattern is designed for height to maybe five foot five inches and I'm five foot six so I did end up adding quite a few inches there considering I'm not that much taller than the actual pattern the, the sort of model the pattern's designed for, the height the pattern's designed for. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I was quite pleased I made those adjustments. I was glad I added the two inches to the leg and then I had a little, a little think about how much I wanted to take off again. Um, and yeah, I was kind of treating this as a bit of a wearable twirl because I didn't know if it would sit nicely at the waist or the crotch. It was a bit of a kind of guessing game. But I think if I made it again, I'd make those same adjustments. So um, yeah, I'm glad with how it turned out. And actually, it was a really, really enjoyable one to sew. I do like True Bias patterns and I've just really enjoyed this one. Um, just everything about the pattern, how it came together. It was quite fun because although it's like a jersey make, which I think generally can be a bit more simple than a woven make, it had some nice details that made it, made you had to take a bit of time over, which made it a bit more, I guess, interesting to sew, particularly around the kind of pockets are sort of caught in the waistband. I don't know if you can see inside. Um, here's a pocket bag and there's the waistband. So you kind of catch the pocket bag in the waistband. So they do hang really nicely and they aren't gonna sort of droop down and sort of gather at the sides because they sort of sit nicely at the front there. Um, which I think is a really nice thoughtful feature of the pattern that the pocket will sit really nicely there at the front. Um, and it was just quite, it was just quite a nice way of kind of, I just really enjoyed sort of spending the time making sure the layers lined up when you're kind of stitching the waistband in and making sure you're catching the pockets and, yeah, it just it was just quite a fun pattern to sew basically, and I found it came together really nicely. And um, yeah, so yeah. Um, and then in terms of do I like it? Actually, I really really love it. I think um, I love it more than I expected to. It's one of those 
You know, sometimes you have makes you think, oh, this is going to be amazing, and you try it on at the end, and you're a bit underwhelmed. This is actually one that I liked more than I expected to, and it is just so comfy. Um, I put it on yesterday, or the day before yesterday, to try and take a few pictures so I could show you what it looks like on. I didn't want to take it off afterwards. I was so comfy in it. Um, it just really is so comfy. Um, yeah, it's lovely to wear, actually. I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this in the warmer weather. It's quite lightweight. I haven't tried it on yet with a t-shirt underneath. I'd like to try that and see how it looks um, layered too. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it, actually. And it's definitely a pattern that I'd make again. I'm quite tempted maybe to make a play suit version as well. I think, yeah, the only trouble is with this pattern, I can see once I've got it on, I would just never want to leave it and just only wear it. Is is that comfy. Um, I like how the straps are quite substantial, so you can wear a bra underneath and it's got good bra coverage for like a summery make. Um, I like the cuffs being elasticated. I think it gives a nice shape to legs. It kind of creates quite a slimline leg, which I think maybe is my preference over a wider leg and makes it feel quite neat. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad I gave it a try. I mentioned in my fabric haul and sewing plans video, I know True Buyers have a children's version of this pattern too. Um, I did mention to my daughter, maybe I could sew one up for her. She wasn't too keen on the idea, but she's only seen my navy version. I think she was thinking I wouldn't want to wear like a boring navy um, jumpsuit. So maybe if I got some cute fabric, I might be able to make her one. I think it'd be so cute and comfy for her, particularly to have this version for summer maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really glad I gave the Nova jumpsuit a go. Um, I definitely recommend it as a pattern. It just comes together really nicely. Um, I do feel with True Bias patterns, it feels like they're just very well thought through, you know, everything's thought of. Even the little interfacing strip on the pockets just to give a really nice finish. But yes, I'll put a couple of pictures up of me wearing the jumpsuit so you can see what it looks like on. Um, yeah, I really love it and it is super comfy and I think it's definitely... Well, I haven't made a lot of jumpsuits, but it's definitely up there as one of my favourite jumpsuit patterns. I do love the Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory too, but I've only made that as a play suit to date. Um, um, but yeah, that's that's a woven jumpsuit, it's a jersey one. So this is definitely my favourite jersey jumpsuit, and I'm really glad that the kind of adjustments I made turned out okay. Because I think with a jumpsuit, a lot is in, you know, how it fits in the different areas and things. You don't want the crotch hanging too low or feeling uncomfortably tight or anything. So... I'm just really glad those adjustments worked out quite well and that I could make it again, knowing that it'll come out all right on that front. I definitely would enjoy making it again. Um, yeah, even the way you finish the little sort of straps at the top here, it's quite fun um, how the sort of shoulder straps come together because the bodice is lined, so you kind of have to um, sort of sew them afterwards and sort of fit them together. Um, you don't sort of turn it so inside and turn it outside. You kind of have to sew them on the outside. And it just all came together really nicely. So yeah, I am a fan of the Nova jumpsuit. <laughs> Oh, and I thought I'd also mention briefly how much fabric I ended up using for this jumpsuit because I know it's often useful to hear how accurate the fabric requirements are on a pattern and whether you actually need that much fabric. And I ended up ordering 2.3 metres of this jersey fabric um, because you can buy in sort of 10 centimetre increments on Minerva, which I do find quite handy. The pattern states, I think for my size I made and this width of fabric that I had, I needed two metres, but I wanted to get a little bit extra just because I knew I'd be lengthening it in points. And I didn't want to be limited too much um, on how much I could lengthen it by. And actually, I ended up using most of the fabric. I didn't have a great deal left. So I definitely say this is a pattern where the fabric requirements are bang on. You couldn't get away with ordering less fabric on this one. You wouldn't want to order less fabric. I think you'd end up coming up short. So yes, I'm glad I ordered a little bit extra because I did need that little extra um, to make my slightly lengthened um, jumpsuit. So yes, that's my Nova jumpsuit and I really, really enjoyed sewing that one. It's a really fun make and I love how it's turned out. So I'm really glad I gave that pattern a try after it had been on my radar for quite a long time and I'm looking forward to when the weather improves so I can get some good wear out of it. So yes, that's my jumpsuit. And then the next thing that I wanted to talk about was my next sewing project that I've got started now. Um, I mentioned it in my sewing plans and fabric haul video last week and I've been starting to work on it since then. But what I'd like to do is to try a new hack of a pattern that I love to hack, which is this one here, the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. So if you've seen um, my previous videos or if you've read my blog, I've done a couple of blog posts about it too actually, you'll know that um, I really enjoy hacking the Ogden Cami pattern and I've made a few different types of dresses um, by starting with this base and sort of adding different skirts and things onto it. Um, 
And yeah, I, I wear all of my Ogden Cami hacks quite a lot. So I know it's a pattern. The one I do hack, I do love to wear. So I'm planning a new hack that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, it's a little bit inspired by a ready to wear dress I had quite a long time ago that I used to really enjoy wearing. And eventually it just, it just wore out really. Um, but what I'd like to do is to um, crop off the Ogden Cami and then add an elasticated channel around the waist and quite a swishy skirt onto it. And when I've had the Ogden Cami to make dresses before, I've always added on like a gathered skirt rather than um, pulling it in by a sort of channel or elastic. I have sometimes added on waist ties to cinch it in, but this will be quite different, I think. And for this one, instead of sort of adding on like a, a sort of rectangle skirt piece, that I've just kind of created myself sort of thing. Um, I'm going to actually mash this pattern up with another pattern. And that pattern is this one here, which is the Lotta dress pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. So it's a dress that has um, this sort of blousy bodice. You can make it either short sleeve or long sleeve. And it's got an elasticated waist and this swishy skirt. So I'd like to borrow these sort of elastic waist channel and the skirt from this pattern and to attach it to the Ogden Cami top to make quite a nice summery dress. Um, and so the skirt pattern piece on the Lotta skirt, whereas I've previously made my Ogden Cami hacks with more of a straight sort of skirt and then gathered it in to give shape. This one actually has more of this shape to it. Um, so I guess the side seems to cut a little bit on the bias um, and has that kind of full swishy skirt that kind of goes larger at the bottom. Um, so yeah, that is my plan. So I'll pop these two together and hopefully it'll come out nicely. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm going to hopefully have fun trying. So, so today, what I've been doing over the last couple of days is I've got the pattern pieces ready. So I, for the Ogden Cami, um, I decided to make the straight size zero, which is pretty much bang on my bust and waist measurement. Um, and I didn't need to worry about the hip measurement on it because I'm going to be cropping off to waist level. So I traced out a size zero. I did have one traced out already for like um, another hack, but I wanted to make a fresh one so I could play with it for this particular pattern. Um, and then I've added on a little bit extra length than where I think it, I might want it to sit, just to give me a bit of room to play with. So I think when I've got it all cut out and I've got the skirt and top sewn up, I'll probably baste them together and see where the waist sits. And I might bring up a little bit at that point. Um, but I guess like with lengthening the leg um, on the Nova jumpsuit, I thought best to have it a bit too long and be able to crop it off and have it too short and have the elastic feeling like it's sort of riding up a little bit too high. So then I had, then I got out my um, Lotta skirt pattern piece because I thought I didn't need to retrace that I didn't need to change it much um, I actually compared the width of that lot of sort of skirt top with the width of the Ogden Cami bottom bit because they're the two seam pieces I'm going to be sewing together and I actually found they're very similar in size so I didn't need to make any adjustments which is great um, I'm pretty much going to be able to sew them straight together and they'll pretty much match so I thought oh that's obviously meant to be to put them together um, so yes that is my plan to cut out the skirt pattern piece and top pattern pieces for the top, I'm going to go for a fully lined bodice again, um, like I usually do for my Ogden Cami dresses, because when you make the Ogden Cami, you add a little facing in and it kind of hangs down. And I thought that'd be a bit weird to have like a free hanging facing on a dress. I thought I may as well bring it down and make the bodice fully lined. Um, so yeah, that is my plan to put these two together and hopefully it'll be like a summery dress with a slightly blousy bodice and then a cinched in waist and a swishy skirt. And then actually it's a mash, it ends up going to be a mashup of three patterns. Because I thought I'd quite like to include pockets in the dress. Because I do find, particularly in the summer, where I don't have pockets in like a jacket or something, it's quite nice to have a little pocket in my sk the skirts of the dress just to put my phone in or something. Um, and when I made the lost dress before, the lost dress actually only comes with a patch pocket option, which I don't think works so well for like a viscose fabric. And I added in instead sort of a side seam inseam pockets. But um, I do find on my lot of dress, they kind of hang down a little bit um, at the side and they sort of sag. So although they, I can put things in them, I guess they're not the best pockets ever. So I thought this time, what I'd like to do actually is a bit like the True Bias jumpsuit is anchor the pockets into the waistband so they sort of hang nicely at the front. Um, so I looked around my other patterns to find a pattern piece for a pocket that'll be suitable for that. And I found one um, as part of this pattern here, which is the S3 skirt by So Liberated which is a pattern I love and I've made quite a few times. I've used their pocket pattern piece quite a few times. Most of my estuary skirts have inseam, side seam pockets that are anchored into the waistband to the front. So you can see here, this is what a pocket pattern piece, a bit of mouthful, um, that looks like it. you sort of sew it onto the side then you also baste it onto the top and then sew it into the seam. Um, well, for the skirt, it's into the waistband seam, but this will be, I'll be sewing it as part of the 
seam that I'm going to use to then create an elastic channel in the middle of the dress. So yes, that is what I'm planning to do. So the pocket should be nicely anchored at the front and should be sort of sagging down the sides. Um, so yes, it's kind of like a mashup of three patterns in a way, although you won't really see any sort of style um, additions from the estuary skirt. It's purely a practical pocket piece. Um, so yes, that is my plan and I'm looking forward to um, yeah, getting started on actually sewing up the fabric, cutting the fabric out and sewing it out up now. Um, now that I've kind of got all the pattern pieces ready to go and I'm pretty happy with it, how, they, how they're looking and how they're going to fit together. And the fabric I'll be using is this one here. Um, it's a lovely viscose fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. Um, yeah, it's nice and swishy and lightweight. It's a perfect for summer dress. It's got this pretty ditzy floral pattern on with this sort of purple base colour and then little yellow and sort of pale yellow and pale pink flowers. So I'm hoping it'll make a nice summery dress. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to see how it goes really, just give it a try and I do enjoy doing sort of pattern hacks and mashups and I always think it's quite fun to make patterns you already have in your collection work in different ways and um, yeah, make good use out of them. So we'll see how these two come together and even if I don't love it at the end, I think it'll be a lot of fun to try it anyway and particularly coming off the back of making my Nova jumpsuit where I pretty much followed the instructions by rote um, and just yeah, followed it through. This one I'll be sort of winging it a little bit, which will be a fun, different thing to do. So yes, I'll hopefully make some good progress um, and, and out on this one and hopefully be able to share the progress with you in another video very soon. But yeah, um, I think she's going to be a bit of fun, hopefully. So yes, that is my next sewing plan. So the next thing that I wanted to share in this video is a completed knitting make. And I think I've shared a bit of progress on this one in previous videos but it's now all finished and it is a new knitted puppy or dog from this book here knitted dogs and puppies by sue stratford if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that i've made quite a few dogs and cats using patterns by sue stratford and um, quite recently i made my son um, this dog here danger dog and then my daughter requested a danger dog for herself too which is what i've been working on is now finished so here is the little danger dog I made for my daughter. Um, I'll show you my son's one too, which is more in the traditional danger dog colours from the book. So this is my son's one um, that I made a month or two ago. Um, his little cape and his little leg warms and everything. And like my daughter wanted one. So here is her version, which um, is more in colours of her preference here. So yeah, we kind of, we went away from the colours in the book. Um, and you can see there's slightly different colour themselves um, just because of what yarn I had left over. This is sport weight yarn which I've used on quite a few of the um, knitted animal projects and I have quite a few sort of half balls left over so I use a dark grey colour for my son and I found this lighter grey colour for my daughter which I thought worked quite well too. And then yeah she chose for Danger Dog's little cape and um, hat and little sort of leg warmers to be in this sort of um, pale pink colour with this turquoise highlight which I think is quite effective too and she chose this little um, pink star button. My son's got a little yellow star button on his. So yes, um, here are the two little danger dogs. Um, they were quite fiddly knits, um, but yeah, quite satisfying to have done. And I, I, what I like about the knitted animals is each one has its own little different expression and looks them. They're never two quite the same. So yeah, they're both really pleased they're danger dogs. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to having a little break now from knitted animals. There is another one my daughter wants um, to make, but I'm going to be working on a couple of other projects for a little bit before I go back to the book. Um, just give me a break because although the knitting's fun, there's quite a lot of sewing up, which isn't my favourite. And um, yeah, I feel like after a little bit, I can get a little bit, just feel like I need a break from it <laughs> and a different type of project so I can get, then come back refreshed um, after a while. I guess maybe I need a palette cleanser <laughs> project um, in between these knitted dogs. But yes. That is little danger dog. I love her little tail. I think it's really cute. Um, and little hat. Um, she looks very well prepared to go out into the world and fight crime. So yeah, that is um, my latest knitting project I've finished. And so now I've got a new knitting project, which I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into. Um, I've sort of got it out this week, but I've only just sort of dipped my toe in and started looking at it. But I've had it for a while, actually. I got it as a kit and I got it for Christmas, I think it was. So I've had it about three months I've had it sort of waiting in the wing um, to sort of planning to get it out once I'd finished a few other projects, including these little pups. So it's a kit by Will and the Gang, and I haven't had a Will and the Gang kit for quite a while. So yeah, I've been really looking forward to opening this one up and um, getting started on it. And it's one for me. 
and it is for a sweater and it's this sweater here the cirrus or cyrus sweater i'm not sure quite how to pronounce it um but yeah it's one that i thought was really pretty because of the stitch you use which is this diamond stitch which i'll show you in a bit more detail in a moment but it's yeah, for quite a relaxed fit sweatshirt with a drop shoulder and you knit it up in one of the gang's shiny happy cotton yarn which I've knitted with before and I find it's really nice to knit with and really nice and soft and comfy to wear too. Um, so yeah, I'm just really looking forward to getting really stuck into this one and having a slightly larger project. I find with the, with the pups, they are lovely, but the knitting pieces are quite small and you finish them quite quickly, whereas this is going to be a bit more of a, a meaty knitting project to get stuck into. And I, I really like the stitch. Um, it's a really fun stitch to knit. So I'll show you the stitch in more detail because um, this week I just thought I'd have a little try of the stitch, a little practice of it um, on some other yarn before I start using my proper yarn for the project. So this is my little teeny tiny little swatch I did of it. So you can see the detail on the stitch there. So it's kind of diamond shape and lacy stitch. Um, and yeah, it's quite a nice one actually. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to knit. Not so tricky that I have to totally focus on it. I could do it while I'm watching TV, but equally it's got a bit of interest to it. So I guess a perfect balance um, in terms of a knitting stitch. So yes, that's just a little teeny piece I did in this leftover yarn I had um, for another project. And um, it's just a teeny tiny ball. So I pretty much used it up on this piece. I knitted until the ball ran out um, pretty much. Um, and then I was fairly comfortable with the stitch. But the actual yarn I'm going to be using is a bit brighter. Um, it's this one here. It's called the Hot Pink um, Shiny Happy Cotton Yarn. So it's a really lovely pink colour. I've actually got another sweater in this pink colour, which I really enjoy wearing with quite a different stitch on it. Um, so yeah. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that project. Um, yeah, I need to have a proper read through the instructions, figure out what size I want to make and all that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'll update you on progress on this one as I, as I go along. It'll be a slightly lo longer project and I might sort of break it up with other little bits. I've got another something I might be working off my daughter as well in the pipeline, a crochet project. Um, but yeah, this will be a nice treat for me and hopefully I'll end up with a quite a nice jumper that I'll really enjoy wearing at the end of it. So yeah. Yeah, that is my next knitting plan. So I think that's everything that I've got to share in this video, everything that I've been up to over the last week or so, and some plans too. So yeah, I've got a few things in progress. I'll look forward to sharing more with you in a future video. But thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what I've been up to. And I hope you've got some nice crafty projects on the go too. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you're new to my channel, then please do sub subscribe um, and press the bell icon too, which means you'll be notified when I bring out future videos. And if you're a long-term viewer, thank you also. Really appreciate you tuning in and liking, commenting, or just watching and enjoying. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you for another video soon. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye.